Welcome to the second and final episode of Varanasi Ghats. In this episode, I will take you around the Ghats to witness things you must have never seen before, sweets you will crave for, the Banarsi life, and a whole lot of fun. Stay tuned. This is the beginning of day three in Banaras. And as usual, we walked along the ghat to head to a new spot to explore, the Manikarnika ghat. Today, we are heading to this ghat called Manikarnika ghat and it's supposed to be the holiest ghat in Varanasi or according to Hindu mythology. This place is supposed to be very sacred for bodies to be cremated and a lot of Hindus uh, wish to be cremated here on this ghat. <laughs> and uh, we're going to see that place because at every point during the day there is at least one body being burned or cremated. People they bring body from all over India to burn here because this place is not made by the human being, it started by Lord Shiva. When people dying here, when people burn here, go directly heaven, no reincarnation. Okay. So here's a little background. According to Hindu mythology, Brahma is the creator of the universe, Vishnu is the nurturer and Shiva the destroyer. They say that Lord Vishnu worshipped Lord Shiva at this ghat for thousands of years. Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati came here pleased with the prayer of Vishnu and since then it is believed that salvation or moksha is attained here. When they visited the ghat, it said that Goddess Parvati lost her earring at this spot, hence the name Manikarnika which means pearl jewellery from the year. Now the speciality of this ghat is that the fire year has been burning for more than thousands of years and that's because there's almost 200 to 300 bodies burned every single day. I mean this just explains how you are born on this planet to die eventually and uh, it's interesting to know about the facts and the history behind it as well. That's Manikarnika right behind me and uh, we're taking a boat from uh, the ghat to go to the Shashwamed ghat that's where our hostel is uh, and we're just gonna like take a boat ride because we've not done that since we've come here uh, it's gonna be a very short ride though because it's only 10 minutes by walk but we because we want to experience the vibe of like going on a boat and looking at the city from a boat we're doing that so let's do it <laughs> As we moved away from Manikarnika Ghat, we also noticed how the burnt ash from the cremation was very well maintained and not allowed to just float away in the Ganga. The river on its whole was super clean during our visit and something I was super impressed about. What we rode was a private boat and could cost you around 300 to 700 rupees or more. But hats off to the men who row the boats because it's so strenuous and so exhausting. Our next stop for the day was the Nepali temple that was built by the king of Nepal when he took exile in Varanasi from 1800 to 1804. Now this was the only temple we visited on our trip because the rest was super packed with tourists. Now the architecture of this temple stands in contrast to the other buildings and other temples in Varanasi and is distinctly Nepalese or Oriental in style.
It's almost dusk and we are awaiting the most special part of Varanasi, the Ganga Aarti at the Shashwamedh Ghat. The Ganga Aarti is performed at many ghats along the Ganga, but the one at the Shashwamedh Ghat is the main part. But what is the Ganga Aarti and why is it performed at all? Every single day, be it hail or storm, several priests come together, face the Ganga River to offer prayers to the goddess Ganga. A lot of people from all over India and the world attend the Aarti and very honestly is such a positive vibe. Everybody chanting to the bhajans, everyone offering the love and respect to Ganga River. It's indeed a perfect way to end your day. The Ganga Aarti is something you must experience when you are in Varanasi. Now we head to Pandey Ghat to eat at our favorite cafe in Varanasi. So guys, after a very very uh, eventful day, we are here at Lucy's Cafe back here because we really like the vibe of this place and we've heard of other cafes as well. But we don't want to risk it today because we are so tired and it's time for some masala chai with some lucy specialty if you're here you have to try this out it's so good and that was the end to day three and welcome to day four We are going to the rooftop. This is still celebrating Makar Sakranti. I think it goes on for a week here. And there are a lot of kites still in the sky. That is Larissa's Patam. All the way to here. Wow! What time was it? वो लड़के ने हमारी पतंग काट दी वहां पे छोटे बच्चे तो गाइस एज यू नो वाराणसी इज नोन फॉर इट्स फूड एंड स्पेशली चाट सो राइट नाउ वी आर हेडिंग टू दिस प्लेस कॉल्ड दीना चाट भंडार एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टेस्ट द टमाटर चाट व्हिच एवरीबॉडी इज आस्किंग मी एवरीबॉडी हैज बीन आस्किंग मी टू टेस्ट दैट एंड इट्स वेरी वेरी पॉपुलर सो लेट्स गो So we're finally here. Oh my god, what a relief after walking for like so many minutes. Is it like with too tangy? It's tangy. And it's like over oh, ripe. And it's all right. It's not That looks better. It's interesting. It's not bad or anything. It's it's really nice. Like, it's yummy. Kind of interesting. It's something that I've never eaten before. So it's good. It's too tomato. Mm -hmm. So on the other hand, we have some uh, chura matter. Yeah. How is it? Good. It's like poha. Poha. With uh, mutton and some shrimp. Yeah, it's okay. We weren't really fond of the tomato chaat. Like I liked it. It was interesting. But we wanted to actually fill our stomach with something. Yeah. So we are having the samosa chaat. Chaat. Samosa chaat. After some delicious chaat, we headed to Lanka by auto rickshaw. Right now we 
are in Lanka, which is uh, close to Asti Ghat, and we took a rickshaw. We came here to have some lassi. So someone suggested that we should have some lassi at Pehlwan Lassi in Lanka, and I'm just walking towards this shop. So let's see if the rickshaw ride and the walk was all worth it. So we're finally here at Pehlwan Sweet. We're here to have some malayo. So excited. Okay, so this is the very famous malayo. I've been wanting to eat this since very long. How is it? Really? Yeah. It's so light. It looks like it's a super light. I thought it would be something like malai. Yeah, but it's not. It's like not even sweet. It's like like looks like you're enjoying it. So after you finish that thing, they pour some milk in this. It's pretty sweet. I think I don't want to have any sweet after this. <laughs> Now day 4 was pretty much about exploring the sweets and chaat and also about just walking in the lanes of Banaras to absorb the culture as much as we can. I usually prefer slow travelling which means uh, not visiting too many touristic spots or too much sightseeing. And I try to speak and interact with as many locals as possible, meet new people and being present rather than just doing too many things in a day. Now welcome to the last special and most unplanned day of our trip. Last day here and uh, today we actually have no plans because we've almost seen all the ghats and we've walked along all the ghats. Let's see, let's see what we have because we have like one whole day to spare. So right now we're taking a boat. So right now we are on the boat and we are right um, opposite the Mani Karnika Ghat right there and we are heading towards Bosle Ghat. So what's the best part about being on the boat is you can just even relax and be here, spend some time with the seagulls. And um, also, uh, sometimes if you're, uh, if the guy who's rowing your boat is talented enough, he'll sing some songs for you. It's, it's so nice to be here in the middle of Ganga. People usually travel up to this part. The unexplored part is the north of uh, Varanasi.
So after a long boat ride, we came back to the Shashwamedh Ghat. We came across a guy selling the basuri, which is nothing but the flute, and I thought of buying it. Now this flute turned my entire day upside down, and you will see how. The kids around found it super weird and funny, so they followed us, and so I sat down with them for a while to entertain them. <laughs> we then came back to Lucy's cafe and Arun who owns the cafe helped us become professional basuri players in 5 minutes I'm just kidding बेसिक्स After a while we met some musicians and a puppeteer from overseas. I think this is the best part about travel, meeting people and getting to know them, their culture. This is something only travel can do. Ay 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 que se nos come la marioneta el perro, se nos la va a comer ahí. Au! Au au. Spain and I'm glad you speak Spanish with me. Yeah, I'm really glad that you uh, asked me before. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo estás? Señor? Estoy muy bien, señorita. It's really weird speaking to a puppet, but <laughs> I have a teacher there. Oh, what are you learning over there? I have a spiritual master and um, he have a season like two months with satsang and yoga, meditation, everything. After a lovely dinner with our guests from abroad, we ended our day with a live concert with them. Oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 una mattina. Mi son svegliato e ho trovato un vaso di belli a su montagna sotto l'ombra di un bel fiume Baguni Baguni Our last few hours here in Varanasi and uh, we thought of heading to some mithai shops and picking some mithai and lassi because we didn't do that absorbing as much as we can we having some tea last minute tea cheers
we are at Baba Lassi and uh, we are having some Lassi obviously and uh, I'm going to show you what this place looks like because it's very interesting. They say that travel teaches you how to look at life with a different perspective. It surely does. But only when you let yourself loose and let life teach you its lessons and its experiences. On this particular trip, I learned that life means nothing when death can be so uncertain. So live each moment and be grateful for what you have. I learned that happiness comes from the smallest of things, things that don't cost you any money. I learned that only your faith in miracles can make miracles happen. That happiness sometimes can also be found in a cup of chai, in learning new things, in making others smile, and mostly when you accept life the way it comes and wholeheartedly absorb whatever it teaches you. Travel is beautiful. Travel is something you have to invest in more than anything in your life because it doesn't only give you great photos, but it makes you believe in magic.